Hello everyone! Today, we will have a new lesson about types and parts of the system unit or computer case. A computer case is also known as a computer chassis, tower, system unit, or cabinet. It is the enclosure that contains most of the components of a personal computer, usually excluding the display, keyboard, and mouse. The system unit also includes the case that houses the internal components of the computer. Cases are usually constructed from steel, often SECC or steel electrogalvanized cold rolled coil, aluminum and plastic. Other materials such as glass, wood, acrylic, and even Lego bricks have appeared in home-built cases. The computer case is the metal and plastic box that contains the main components of the computer, including the motherboard, central processing unit or CPU, and power supply. The front of the case usually has an on or off button and one or more optical drives. For example, if a repair shop asks you to bring in your computer, it may be unclear whether you need to bring the, your monitor and peripheral devices as well. If you are told to just bring your system unit, it is clear you only need to bring the computer itself. Some modern computers such as the iMac combine the system unit and monitor into a single device. In this case, the monitor is part of the system unit, where laptops also have built-in displays. They are not called system units since the term only refers to desktop computers. There are types of system unit or computer case. The most common system case type is the tower. Depending on the specific number of internal drive base and the height of the tower, these cases can be further classified into mini-size and mid-size or full-size tower cases. One of the biggest considerations when choosing between case sizes is the number of slots and the number of devices we would like to add to those cases. First is the full tower cases. Full tower cases are generally big with a height that is about or more than 30 inches or more than 76 centimeters. The number of internal drive bays inside these cases can be between 6 and 10. Next is the mid tower, which is another case that may, might be a step down, would be classified as a mid tower case. The mid tower cases are the most widely used computer air cases. Mid tower cases are about 18 to 24 or 45 to 60 centimeter inches high and they usually contain two to four internal drive bays and a similar number of external bays for CD or DVD readers and similar. Followed by mini tower, Mini tower usually have up to two or sometimes three internal drive bays. Mini cases normally stand at a height of 12 to 18 inches or 30 to 45 centimeters. Expandability is a problem with these cases. Next is the slimline case. Slimline cases are simply tower cases turn on their sideways. They can hold a monitor on top of the cases. And last type for the system unit or computer case is the small form factor case or SFF case. The small form factor or SFF cases are custom cases that are designed to minimize the spatial volume of a desktop computer. SFFs are available in a variety of sizes and shapes, including shoe boxes, cubes, and book size pieces. 
Let us talk about the different parts of the system unit or computer case. For the front of a system unit or computer case, here are the following parts. Optical disk drive. The optical disk drive, often called a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive, this lets your computer read CDs and DVDs. Power button. The power button is used to power the computer on and off. Audio in or audio out. Many computers include audio ports on the front of the computer case that allow you to easily connect speakers, microphones, and headsets without fumbling with the back of the computer. Next is the USB or the Universal Serial Bus Port. Most desktop computers have several USB ports. This can be used to connect almost any type of device, including the mice or mouse, keyboards, printers, and digital cameras. They will often appear on the front and back of the computer. Now let us talk about the back of a system unit or computer case. The back of a computer case has connection ports that are made to fit specific devices. The placement will vary from computer to computer and many companies have their own special connectors for specific devices. Some of the ports may be color-coded to help you determine which port is used with a particular device. First, the power socket. This is where you will connect the power cord to the computer. Of course, there is also an audio in or audio out. Almost every computer has two or more audio ports when you connect various devices including speakers, microphones, and headsets. Next, the Ethernet, the Ethernet port. This port looks a lot like the modem or telephone port, but it is slightly wider. You can use this port for networking and connecting to the internet. The USB ports. On most desktop computers, most of the USB ports are on the back of the computer case. Generally, you will want to connect your mouse and keyboard to these ports and keep the front USB ports free so they can be used for digital cameras and other devices. Next, the monitor port. This is where you'll connect your monitor cable. In this example, the computer has bought a display port and a VGA port. Other computers may have other types of monitor ports such as DVI or Digital Visual Interface or HDMI or High Definition Multimedia Interface. Next is the serial port. This port is less common on today's computers. It was frequently used to connect peripherals like digital cameras, but it has been replaced by USB and other types of ports. Followed by PS2. These ports are sometimes used for connecting the mouse and keyboard. Typically, the mouse port is green and the keyboard port is purple. On new computers, these ports have been replaced by USB. Next, the expansion slots. These empty slots are where expansion cards are added to computers. For example, if your computer did not come with a video card, you could purchase one and install it here. How about parallel port? This is an older port that is less common on new computers, like the serial port, 
it has now been replaced by USB. There are other types of ports, such as Firewire, Thunderbolt, and HDMI. If your computer has ports you don't recognize, you should consult your manual for more information. I will show you examples of other types of ports. This example is about desktop, computer case, or system unit. Next, example of the all-in-one. And last, the example on the laptop, both the left side are the right side. That's for all regarding the types and parts of the system unit or computer case. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.